Is Gucci one of the most controversial fashion brands in history? Whilst Gucci is known to most simply as a luxury designer brand, the brand's history is one of family feud, betrayal, passion and tragedy. The Italian brand known for design and heritage has fascinated the fashion world for generations. How did the Gucci brand evolve over the years and what's the truth about the Gucci family? Please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Gucci was founded by Florence-born Guccio Gucci. As a teenager and before he launched his brand, he worked as a bellboy at the Savoy Hotel in London. Whilst working as a bellboy, he became enamoured with the luxury luggage and cases carried by the hotel's illustrious guests. He returned to Italy and worked for the luggage brand Franzi, where he learned how to work with leather. In 1921, Guccio Gucci opened his first store in Florence, Italy, where he sold leather goods and luggage. He later added equestrian accessories to his list of product offerings and enlisted his four sons, Aldo, Vasco, Rodolfo and Ugo, who he adopted, into the family business. His daughter, Grimalda, was not involved and his son Enzo had died eight years prior. We are like a, an Italian trattoria. The whole family is in the kitchen. And so we are. In the 30s, an embargo was placed on Mussolini's Italy by the League of Nations, now known as the United Nations, regarding the import of leather. This affected the Gucci business and caused the family to deviate from their leather usage and explore other materials, including hemp and woven canapa. The brand's first commercially successful bags was made from canapa and featured the now iconic brown on tan interlocking diamond GG pattern. In the mid-20th century, Gucci began a series of expansions and innovations, and they opened various stores across Italy. They introduced the bamboo-handled bag made from Japanese-imported bamboo. They launched cotton canvas bags with double G logos flanked by red and green bands, and Aldo Gucci designed the company's first pigskin bag. In 1952, Aldo Gucci opened a Gucci boutique at the Savoy Plaza Hotel in New York, the first Gucci outlet outside of Italy. Shortly after, Gucci Gucci died, leaving ownership of the brand divided amongst his biological sons, who allegedly prevented Ugo, Gucci's adopted son, from having a stake in the company. In 1953, the brand released the Gucci Loafer, featuring a metal horse bit, a nod to the brand's roots in equestrian accessories. In the 60s, the United States first lady and fashion icon, Jacqueline Kennedy, was seen carrying a Gucci bag, this bolstered the popularity of the brand and the bag was later renamed the Jackie Bag. The Jackie Bag became one of the most photographed bags in the 60s and 70s. In the early 60s, Aldo Gucci designed the iconic double G logo, which the brand adopted. And in the late 60s, Rodolfo created the Gucci Flora Scarf for Grace Kelly. In the 1980s, Gucci faced a particularly rocky time. Long-standing family feuds, rivalries and infighting that were simmering beneath the surface finally came to a boil. First, in 1969, Giorgio Gucci, Aldo's son, caused tensions when he launched Gucci Boutique on his own. This was later reabsorbed into the Gucci group. Next, in 1980, Aldo's son, Paolo, attempted to launch his own fashion lines using the family name. Other family members were furious and filed a series of lawsuits to prevent Paolo's lines from being launched. Paolo's venture was eventually blocked, however this kicked off a series of increasingly public family spats. Aldo Gucci created Gucci offshoots to increase his take-home profits and hired Paolo, however Paolo was later fired by his uncle Rodolfo and his father for poor management. More lawsuits were filed and various family members were investigated for tax evasion, allegedly aided by disgruntled members of the family, including Paolo. One person who worked for the company said, Paolo has been a traitor to everyone. Yes, maybe, yes. You know, against bandits. I mean, if you live there, maybe you're a traitor, right? Uh, I think I remember, how to call them, mafia? Well, that's, that's, that's a strong word, word that's a word, yeah, yeah, But yeah. it's that concept, of course. In 1982, a year after Gucci's first fashion show, Paolo filed a $13 million lawsuit against family members after they allegedly attacked him physically at a board meeting. That same year, Gucci's board decided to take the company public in hopes of alleviating some of the family's feuds, impending lawsuits and help to grow the brand. Rodolfo Gucci began to direct the company, however this was met with some disdain as many thought he didn't deserve this position due to his many years out of the family business where he was an actor. 
However, soon after, in 1983, he died, passing his majority stake in the Gucci business to his son Maurizio. Maurizio Gucci undertook legal action to push his uncle Aldo out of the company and the family descended back into conflict. After a nearly six year legal battle for control over the house of Gucci against Aldo, who eventually went to prison for one year for tax evasion. In 1989, Maurizio Gucci was made chairman of the Gucci Group and sold almost half of the Gucci Group shares to Investacorp, a Bahrain-based investment company. Maurizio wanted a luxury relaunch of the family business and thought that his uncle Aldo's focus on mass production had greatly weakened the brand. In 1989, Maurizio hired Dawn Mello, the former head of luxury New York department store Bergdorf Goodman, as the creative director of Gucci to help with the brand image. In 1990, she hired Tom Ford as an in-house designer. Despite Gucci sales being in the millions, the business was near bankruptcy, largely due to extravagant expenditure on Gucci premises across Italy. Maurizio Gucci was largely blamed for this, and three years later, he sold the remaining shares of Gucci to Investacorp, ending the Gucci family's involvement with the brand. Two years later, he was killed in Milan by a hitman. His ex-wife, Patrizia Reggiani, was later convicted of organising the hit, reportedly due to her disdain that Maurizio had sold the family business. In 1994, Tom Ford was appointed the creative director of Gucci. As Gucci's creative director, Tom Ford aesthetically transformed Gucci's image from what American Vogue called a logo-laden look to one that portrayed a sophisticated sex appeal and sensuality. For example, for the Gucci Autumn Winter 1996 show, he caused a sensation as it featured plunging necklines and cutouts, emphasising the skin and the body beneath. For an in-depth look at Tom Ford's designs at Gucci and his career, check out my previous video on Tom Ford. Under Tom Ford's leadership, the Gucci brand was revitalised and again became synonymous with luxury. Tom Ford helped to shape the Gucci style and massively increased Gucci's profits. Between 1995 and 1999, the luxury French group LVMH had been discreetly buying shares in Gucci before seeking a hostile takeover. Gucci's leadership accused LVMH of unfair business practices and sought to dilute their 34% stake. Sensing an opportunity, French holding company Pinot Printemps Redoute decided to acquire a majority stake in Gucci. This prompted a series of public legal confrontations for the battle of the Gucci group. As part of this battle, Pinot Printemps Redoute purchased a controlling stake in Alexander McQueen's couture line whilst he was lead designer at Givenchy, an LVMH-owned brand. In 2001, all parties came to an agreement with Pinot Printemps Redoute, now known as Caring, retaining ownership of the Gucci group. Following Tom Ford's departure from Gucci in 2004, his role at Gucci was initially taken over by three designers that had worked under him. Domenico De Soleil, who had worked with the Gucci family for many years and also served as a Gucci Group CEO, also left in 2004 and went on to join Tom Ford's fashion house. In 2006, Frida Giannini, one of the three designers, became Gucci's creative director. She was more modest in her designs than Tom Ford and has been credited with bringing many of Gucci's classic designs back into circulation, such as the new bamboo bag and the new Jackie bag, and nod to the brand's legacy designs. Following declining sales and Gucci being criticised for not setting trends, Frida was succeeded in 2015 by Alessandro Michel, who helped the brand gain traction amongst the younger audience. He had been working at Gucci since 2002 and introduced a renaissance era by fusing heritage Gucci signatures with a more modern aesthetic, including the Jackie O bag and the new Dionysus bag. He had a rather gender fluid approach and utilised a mixture of prints, colours and textures in his designs, with horse bit and double G logos adorning many of his accessories. After initially almost tripling Gucci's revenue from 3.9 billion in 2015 to 9.7 billion in 2021, sales began to decline. In 2023, Sabato De Sano became the creative director at Gucci, following his tenure at Valentino. His first collection was at Milan Fashion Week in 2023, and in my previous video, I detailed what the fashion industry was anticipating about the new era for Gucci. Sabato De Sano wanted to display his collection on the streets of Milan, however, he had to quickly relocate to Gucci's Milan hub due to heavy rain forecast the night before the fashion show. The theme of the show was Ancora, which translates to still 
or also now, also then, showing the brand's desire to take the heritage of the brand and configure it for the contemporary market. His collection was witnessed by celebrities including Kylie Jenner, Julia Roberts, Ryan Gosling and Bad Bunny. The collection itself marked a stark departure from previous creative director Alexandre Michel as Desano focused on pragmatism over theatrics. The collection largely focused on wardrobe classics including the white vest, denim jeans, tailoring and knitwear. The reviews were mainly positive, however, it's likely that Karen will want to see Gucci's financial performance under Desano as the ultimate indicator for the success of the designer. Gucci has a very interesting and controversial history. It started due to Guccio's love for luxury luggage design and was born out of his experience crafting leather. He brought in his children into the family business where they made design innovations and grew quickly. However, the family's tensions caused infighting and rifts that were not easily repaired and the 20th century started without the involvement of any members of the Gucci family. I think that Gucci has an iconic history of design, however, financial performance has often been placed at the forefront of the brand, which has at times impacted Gucci's position as a trendsetter and a truly premier brand for luxury. Although strong financial performance is essential for the longevity of any brand, many look to designer fashion labels for beautifully crafted, premium and enticing design aesthetics. In 2022, Gucci was reportedly worth $37.9 billion and is the largest caring group brand. Therefore, if Desano can make consumers enamoured with the brand, this bodes well. What do you think of the Gucci brand and its history? And what do you think the future of the brand will look like? Please make sure to subscribe and like this video and leave your comments down below. This is Bookstore Business, drink in the knowledge.